Let's talk about how you go about doing this. So for density conversions, keep in mind density for solids is grams per cubic centimeter. Grams for liquids is grams per milliliter. They are the same thing. One milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter, so these are the same thing. But nonetheless, we use this as convention because this is volume for liquids, volume for solids. Okay, let's look at this now. Uh, be aware, although it's useful to know formula for density, it is not acceptable to use the density formula as a way of showing your work. In order to get any credit at all, you must show units combining or canceling correctly to give the correct answer, just like in the notes. So in other words, what it's saying is D equals M over V. If you then plug in the numbers and call it done, that's no credit, even if you get the right answer. So how do you go about doing that? What is the density of an object with a volume of that many cubic centimeters and that many grams? You need to take grams per cubic centimeters. This means you got to take grams divided by cubic centimeters. So there's your grams, 636.26 grams divided by 674 centimeters cubed equals, and let's get that in there, 636.26 divided by 674, that many. Now that's your raw calculator answer. You gotta round this correctly. So that's one, two, three, four, five significant figures, four, three on the bottom. This needs to be rounded to three significant figures also. The least number of significant figures counts. So that is 0.944 for the numerical portion of this answer. You could also write those 9.44 times 10 and then you get a second. However, we're not done. 9.44 what? Grams per cubic centimeter. All right, simple as that. So if it doesn't ask for specific units of density, just use the ones that are given, grams and cubic centimeters. There we go. All right, let's look at some more. The density of a liquid of the volume of that many milliliters and that much mass. Again, grams divided by milliliters equals uh, grams per milliliter, which is exactly what we need. So that means 60.0 grams divided by 24.9 milliliters is going to give the mass that we need. So 60 divided by 20, oops, 24.9 equals that much. Three sig figs on top, three sig figs on bottom, so three sig figs is what we need here. 2.41. Yes, that zero is next to a nine, so it becomes 2.41 grams per milliliter. Of course, we'll box our answer. All right, onward. The mass of an object with a volume of that much and a density of that much. So if it doesn't specifically tell you what units to use for mass, use what you're given. See that grams right there? Use grams. So what that means is then you are going to need to figure out a way to make cubic centimeters cancel with this cubic centimeters to give grams. So you have grams per cubic centimeter for this unit, and you have cubic centimeters for this unit. Turns out, if we just multiply them by each other, cubic centimeter cancels cubic centimeter to give grams. So that's it. That's our plan. So let's do that. See, this cubic centimeter has the number 71 associated with it. So 71 cubic centimeters times, and then we'll need to put the fraction there just because you see this fraction here, I'll put a fraction here too. Grams on top, the word, the unit gram has this number associated with it. That's 5.3114 grams, and then cubic centimeter on bottom. Density is the mass of one cubic centimeter. So if you see this many grams, that's the mass of one cubic centimeter. So we say if one cubic centimeter has a mass of that many grams, then one cubic centimeter has a mass of that many grams. So just this number goes with the grams. So just make sure it stays with the grams. So what we're seeing here is 71 times this divided by one will give you the answer. And since cubic centimeters will cancel cubic centimeters, you'll have grams for your answer, which is what we're looking for. So we're going to do that. 71 times 5.3114 gives that. This is two sig figs, this is five sig figs, better round it to. 377 becomes, you gotta round right here at that first seven, number seven. The seven is next to seven, so it rounds up to an eight, so 380. 380 grams. All right, so that's that. Now, um, let me, 
check one of the little things here. I just want to check one of my reference papers. Okay. Make sure to box that. No decimal point there because you want to have two significant figures. This is two sig figs. So if I put a decimal there, that'd be three sig figs. All right, onward. Volume with an, of an object with a density of that and a mass of that. So you got to figure out volume. And since it doesn't tell you what units it wants, you just assume you use this volume unit right here, cubic centimeters. So you got to figure out how to make this and this cancel and make cubic centimeters. So grams and cubic centimeters, and you have grams. And that sure isn't going to work because this is equal to gram squared per cubic centimeter, and that doesn't even make sense, so don't even try. So instead, what you do is you take the gram per cubic centimeter, and by the way, you notice cubic centimeters on top, or it's on the bottom. There's no way we'll get it in an answer if it's on the bottom. And you got to flip it. Put the cubic centimeters on top, put the grams on the bottom, turning it into cubic centimeters per gram. Because if you take that and see this gram right here, if you times it by grams, you'll get gram cancel gram to give cubic centimeters. That would work. So flip this unit upside down and then times it by this, which is what this is. Flip this unit upside down to give this and then times it by that. And that cancels to leave cubic centimeters behind. All right, so let's move along then to the next thing, which is actual plugging the numbers and trying it out. So if we're going to flip the num the units, grams on bottom, cubic centimeters on top, you got to flip this number too. See this 4.550? It goes with grams. That means if we're going to have grams on bottom and cubic centimeters on top multiplied by grams to give our answer, then we got to have 4.550 on bottom and a 1 on top, because this is the mass of one cubic centimeter. That's what density is. It tells you the mass of a single cubic centimeter, so there's the mass of a single cubic centimeter. And then uh, the grams, it's that right there, 1.24068. 1.24068. Ran out of space there, but you get the idea. So this is saying, and by the way, if I'd have done it the other way around, 1.24068, times this, it would give the exact same thing. So it doesn't matter. In fact, sure, I'll just do it the, that other way too. 1.24068 divided by 4.550, because you divide by what's on bottom times by what's on top, gives that answer. And by the way, in case you're having a hard time seeing, let me do it the other way around too. 1 divided by 4.550 equals that times 1.24068 is the exact same number I had before. So it doesn't matter if you take this times this, this divided by this, or one divided by this times this. In other words, it doesn't matter if this was over here and came first, you're gonna get the same thing. So uh, 0 0.2726, whatever. This is one, two, three, four significant figures. This is one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures. So you'd better have four sig figs in your answer because that's the small number of sig figs. So one, two, three, four, that six is the four significant figure. It's next to a seven, so it rounds up. So 0 0.2727, and I'm running out of space here, but cubic centimeters would be our answer. All right, so that being what that is, let's move along here. What is the volume of a cube with a density of that many cubic grams per cubic centimeter and that many kilograms? What is the volume of a cube? So that means we're going to find cubic centimeters as our units, and we need to make them cancel. However, be aware, if we can once again flip this upside down, so grams per cubic centimeter, flip it, cubic centimeters per gram. We can do that. We flipped it before. We'll flip it again. If you times it by kilograms, Grams doesn't cancel grams. Let's say you get centimeter cubed kilogram over gram. That doesn't make sense. So you got to convert this to grams before you're allowed to do anything. So uh, let's wipe this out because I'm running out of space pretty quick here. And we're going to do that. So if we, have cent if we convert it to grams, then we can go centimeters cubed times grams equals centimeter cubed. So, okay, convert this to grams. So 127 kilograms times kilogram on bottom, so I can cancel kilogram. Gram on top, so it can give me grams. Kilo means a thousand, so I put a thousand next to gram because gram is the smaller unit. So a thousand goes next to the smaller unit. In this case, the smaller unit happens to be on top, so you put it on top. So kilograms, a thousand grams. 
Turns out one kilogram is 127,000 grams. Now this is not our final answer, so I'm not going to worry about rounding, sig figs, etc. I'm going to put this in here though. So let's do our math now. So centimeter cubed per gram times this. And by the way, here, I'll show it the other way around. I took the centimeter cubed per gram times the grams. I'll flip it the other way around because we can also do grams times this equals cubic centimeters. It'll work the same way. So if I have 127,000 grams times one cubic centimeter having a mass of 44.31 grams, yes, that's right, flip the units upside down and flip the number with it. The, this number stays next to grams. So if this grams moves to the bottom, the number moves to the bottom. Anyway, so it's saying this divided by this. 127,000 divided by 44.31 equals that. Now, uh, let's convert that to scientific notation. That's 2.866 stuff times 10 to the third. If you don't believe me, here you go. Um, if we need to round that for significant figures. This has three sig figs. This has three sig figs. The numbers you start with determine the sig figs in your final answer and any other numbers you use along the way. So uh, let's go ahead and convert that. Or, well, convert that to the right number of sig figs and round it. So one, two, three sig figs. So it's 2.87 because the six is next to another six, so it rounds up. So 2.87 times 10 to the third. And what's our unit again? Gram cancels grams to leave centimeters cubed behind. That's our volume. Okay, now... Again, if I'd have taken one over this and then, just like I did here, times 127,000 at the end, it would have gotten the exact same answer. I've already demonstrated that on the previous one. All right, now, what is the density in those units of an object which is this size and that many kilograms? Okay, check it out. Centimeter is not centimeter cubed. you got to calculate the volume. And then this, you got to convert this to grams again. 5.72 kilograms times let's see kilogram on bottom so we can cancel gram on top gives grams and then uh let's see 1000 grams is equal to a kilogram i put the thousand next to gram because gram is a small unit so 500.72 times a thousand is 5720 grams so the mass is 5720 grams as for the volume volume is side times side times side for a cube so 12 9 times 12 times 8. 9 times 12 times 8. 864. So this is 864 cubic centimeters. So there's our grams, there's our cubic centimeters. And it's asking, what's the density? So let's take the grams, divide by cubic centimeters, which will give the correct units. So 5,720 grams divided by 864 cubic centimeters equals 5,720 divided by 864, 6.620, whatever. Okay, two sig figs, three sig figs, three, two sig figs, three sig figs. Now, I'm aware that technically this should have two significant figures. However, we don't round until the end. So I left it as 864, the raw calculator output. I don't round until the end. Now that I'm all the way at the end, yes, I know this is three sig figs and this is three sig figs, but don't forget, you used a two sig fig number in your calculations. In fact, you used two numbers that are two sig figs. So you round your final answer to two sig figs, which means 6.6 .6 grams. Sorry, grams per cubic centimeter. Because you have to reflect the quality of the data you started with. And you started with numbers that had two sig figs amongst your data. All right, now, onward. Water is the density of that at 25 degrees Celsius. What is the mass in kilograms of 2.25 liters at that temperature? All right, so it's asking you to find mass in kilograms. So we're going to need to convert this to kilograms. Or we can just get grams and then convert to kilograms when we're done. That might be easier. Let's just get grams and then convert to kilograms. You have grams per milliliter here. And you want to times it by liters. 
Oh no, that won't work. You'll just get gram liter per milliliter. You're going to have to convert this to milliliters. That way you can have grams per milliliter times this in milliliters, which will give you grams. And then you can take your grams and convert to kilograms. All right, so we're going to do this. Let's convert this to milliliters. So 2.55 liters times liter on bottom, because the liter can cancel liter, milliliter on top. Milli means one one thousandth. Put a thousand next to milliliter because milliliter is the smaller unit and then one on bottom. Some people just put start putting thousand on top all the time. Don't do that. It's only on top because the smaller unit happens to be on top. All right. Anyway, this times a thousand is 2,550 milliliters. So we have 2,550 milliliters. So let's do it. 0 0.9970. Four seven zero time or that's grams per milliliter times the number of milliliters two thousand five hundred fifty milliliters milliliter cancels milliliter to give grams let's see what the math gives us point nine nine seven zero oh four seven zero times two thousand five hundred fifty is that many what is that grams so that's uh 2542.46985 grams and we're going to multiply that by gram on bottom and kilogram on top why because it's asking for the mass in kilograms not grams so let's put kilograms on top so it'll be our final mass gram on bottom so we can cancel kilo means a thousand and since the small unit happens to be on the bottom this time, a thousand goes on the bottom because gram is smaller than a kilogram, i.e. one gram is smaller than a thousand grams. So that's how we do our conversion factor. It's basically just this that we had divided by a thousand. And we get that many kilograms, 2.54 whatever. Now we need a round. Look at the numbers you started with. That's a whole lot of sig figs. 25 degrees Celsius was not part of our calculation, so don't worry about this number. It doesn't matter. If the number's not part of your calculation, don't count it. 2.55 liters. That's three sig figs. Any other numbers? Well, this has infinite sig figs, and so does this for these conversion factors, so don't worry about them. So it looks like 2.55 is going to determine that we have three significant figures in our answer. So we're going to round this to three significant figures. 2.54... kilograms. All right, that's the mass of the water, and that's the final answer in our thing. Here we go.